The history of Japan's Rabbit Island is way darker than tourists suspect. Those who travel to Japan's Okunushima, an island on the inland sea, report a similar story. Walking along a gorgeous cement path, they hear the sound of tiny nails skittering off the pavement. After turning around, they're swarmed by a multicolored mass of fluff and spot hundreds of tiny wet noses wriggling with delight. For some, a stroll through acres of rabbits is an ideal night out, a walk with nature you can't find anywhere else. But don't be fooled by all the floppy ears and nubby tails. Japan's so-called Rabbit Island has a darker history than its adorable residents ever let on. At first glance, Okonushima looks just like any of the other islands that make up Japan's Sido Inland Sea. Accessible only by ferry, this unassuming strip of rock and tree has become one of the country's most popular attractions. And not just because of its natural beauty. Instead, tourists flock from all over the world for a chance to experience the island's huge, feral rabbit population. In fact, Okonushima is now most often referred to by its nickname, Usagishima, literally, Rabbit Island. More than 1,000 of these furry little creatures call Okonushima home, and with no natural predators, their numbers only continue to grow each year. Many locals have come to associate the island with fertility, though tourists seem to hold a far different perspective. Okonushima has become the premier destination for those looking to get up and close and personal with these cuddly creatures. Years of contact have rendered the rabbits docile and unafraid of humans, with many even coming right up to visitors for a quick sniff. Unsurprisingly, this unique behavior has produced plenty of viral content that's only served to attract more tourists to its shores. But while an island filled with cute, friendly rabbits may seem innocent as can be, the history of Okonoshima is anything but. Before it was a world-famous tourist destination, Okonoshima served as a cultivation site for mainland Japan for centuries. It wasn't until 1904, during the outbreak of the Russo-Japanese War, that the island began to take shape of something more than just farmland. Ten forts were constructed to protect the island, though following the war's swift end in 1905, the structures fell out of use. Still, Okonoshima had proved capable of supporting military installments and keeping secrets well. With the island's population at less than 20, the Japanese government knew that they could do as they pleased on the island without fear of prying eyes. That's why in 1925, the Imperial Japanese Army arrived on Okonoshima with sinister intentions. After receiving intel that the powers of Europe and the United States were doing the same, the army initiated a secret program to begin developing chemical weapons for Japan. Not exactly rabbit-friendly behavior. The construction of the weapons factory on the island was highly classified, and most of those that were employed here were never told what they were making. The Japanese government even went as far as completely erasing Okonoshima from their maps. For more than a decade, the facility at Okashima produced over 6 kilotons of mustard gas and tear gas for use by the Imperial Japanese Army. These chemicals were primarily used during the Second Sino-Japanese War between 1937 and 1945, resulting in more than 80,000 deaths. Following Japan's surrender at the end of World War II, all documents pertaining to the project were destroyed, and American troops ultimately disposed of the remaining chemicals through dumping, burning, and burying. Yet what does any of this have to do with an island full of rabbits? Well, during the height of the chemical production, rabbits were shipped to Okonoshima for use as test subjects. After the factory shut down, the workers wound up releasing the animals into the wild. Or at least, that's what many first believed. As it turns out, the remaining rabbits were actually killed by American troops when they arrived on Okonoshima. So how did this enormous colony of fluffballs really get here? Believe it or not, the island's rabbits are actually descendants of a group of eight that were released on the island back in the 70s during early efforts to transform Okonoshima into a park. Since then, these rabbits have only continued to multiply and thrive, though they may not for much longer. 
The increasing popularity of Okonoshima has resulted in a population boom as tourists continue feeding rabbits uninhibited. This wouldn't be a problem if visits to the island were constant, though, unfortunately, tourism doesn't work that way. During the off-season, human-supplied feed becomes a rarity, leaving the 1,000-strong population to turn to the island itself for food. As the number of rabbits continues growing unchecked, it's only a matter of time before Okonoshima's vegetation is completely wiped out. And even when these tourists are around, they're not exactly feeding these rabbits the healthiest diets. Many visitors will sneak nutritionless and even harmful foods to these animals, resulting in the average rabbit lifespan falling to just two years. Of the 728 rabbits that we counted on the island, 28% had visible injuries or illnesses, reported Animals and Society Institute program director Margot DeMello, who saw this percentage jump to 50 in the areas of the island closest to humans. Conservationists are now working to limit the impact of tourists on Okonoshima.